I've got three questions that I wanted to ask, and Ambassador, I will just start with you. Over the, over the past year, the committee has become increasingly concerned as we have seen USAID inhibiting the, the um, congressional watchdog here, the GAO, from doing its job. And as you know, I spoke with former Administrator Shaw about this after being contacted a number of times by the GAO. And um, he give, gave me a written assurance that this policy would be repealed and that the GAO would be provided with the information, including unredacted documents that it needs. And I was just going to ask you, is, is this your, your commitment as well? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I thank you also for uh, the many uh, uh, opportunities where you support uh, our programs. Uh, certainly, uh, I give you that commitment. That's fine. Um, That's fine with me. That's good enough. Okay. <laughs> we'll, 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 uh, we'll see the policy is repealed, and I'll, I'll work with you on that, and I appreciate it. Thank you. On food aid reform is another area where I, I worked with Director Shaw closely, and I've been working with a ranking member and other members of this committee for two years now to try to make food aid uh, the program there more efficient and more effective. And we want to get more feed, more, more food sent to more people in need uh, in real time here when these disasters hit. And we can do this at a, at a lesser cost uh, if we, and we've made some progress in doing it. But um, uh, Ambassador, how much does USAID spend annually on shipping food aid? as a result of the U.S. cargo preference requirements? And how would USAID's food aid program be affected if cargo preference was bumped back up to 75 percent, as, been, as uh, was proposed by some last year? And I'd follow that up with another question. How many U.S. shipping companies benefit from agricultural cargo preferences? Are they all wholly U.S. owned? And uh, how many more people could be reached with 45 percent flexibility, assuming a budget of 1.4 billion? If I can kind of give you that outlay and and get your feedback. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in answer to the question, uh, how many, uh, how much did we spend? Um, about 175 million dollars to ship food um, aid was spent in FY13 with about $125 million spent uh, on U.S. flag vessels to comply with cargo preference requirements. Uh, there are, um, as you indicated or re requested, uh, there are three carriers, principal carriers, that account for about 85 percent of the food aid shipped in the past two fiscal years. And we spend, um, as I said, $175 million. Uh, the request for FY16 is to give us a 25 percent um, leeway in that. That amount, uh, that, that kind of flexibility would allow us to feed about two million more people around the world. Um, it would probably get us to a point where we would be able to cut maybe 11 to 14 weeks off of delivery. And it would get the food in a timely fashion to those in need uh, using a, a number of ways, um, voucher systems, cash vouchers, uh, credit cards, uh, to purchase local uh, food uh, items. Uh, in general, it would uh, uh, create an environment where certainly we'd be faster in our effort to get food around to those who are in need. So I hope that was a those responses addressed each of your questions. Thank you, Ambassador. The other, the other issue I was going to raise is land tenure uh, in, in the Philippines. Um, as I noted in my opening statement, individual property and title transfer rights are really critical. And we see this playing out all over the world. It helped spark a revolution across North Africa and the Middle East. And in Haiti, the inability to secure land title has really impeded our recovery uh, efforts there. In Cambodia and the Philippines, land grabbing routinely undermines U.S. supported development efforts. So given the significance of U.S. investments in the Philippines, I've been pressing USAID and MCC to tackle the land grabbing issue there for years. I've made several trips there and seen this firsthand, been out to some of the areas where this has occurred. 
I very much appreciate your efforts, but it's unclear to me how high this is on the embassy's priority list, and that's why I raise it. Ambassador, what specifically is USAID doing to urge the government of the Philippines to address the issue of land grabbing and have any of the corrupt local officials who are complicit in land grabbing been held accountable? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Land tenure remains a key priority for USAID. Uh, the lack of formal access to land and natural resources is uh, in many ways, a major cause of poverty, certainly, conflict, or for that matter, uh, prevents a, a country from reaching its full development. Since 2008, USAID has worked to improve regulatory requirements for um, the Philippines, the government of the Philippines, and streamline land registration processes of one description or another. I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, that uh, in response to um, Typhoon uh, Haiyan, uh, many Philippine uh, citizens lost their title as a result of that, uh, that catastrophe. And one of the things that we're doing specifically, as your, uh, your request, is working with the government of uh, the Philippines as well as the city of Leyte to restore those deeds and titles uh, to the people, uh, the farmers and other landholders. Again, as I think about this, uh, this issue, it's, the Philippines is certainly uh, our focus, but we're also looking at this across the globe. My own experience in Tanzania was uh, one where land tenure became such a critical issue that in some cases people did not seek out an opportunity to improve themselves simply because they were denied the opportunity for land. And when we made it possible through encouraging the government's reform for people to use the land farmers. They produced sufficient food items for themselves, but on, also they, they produced items sufficient enough to sell on the market, the local markets. And so they improved themselves. They sent their children to school as a result of the uh, cash they were able to secure as a result of selling additional food items. And so this issue is a major consideration in development. And so you have pressed on a very key issue that we certainly have taken to heart, and we will continue to work with your, you and your committee as uh, something that uh, certainly we have to get um, resolved as quickly as we possibly can. Yeah, well, one of the things that's happening is that very well-connected developers at the local level mm -hmm. uh, with, where there's local government corruption are basically uh, blocking access to public roads. I saw this myself driving out to one of these areas where this had happened and uh, roaring up on a, on a motorcycle is, uh, you know, one of the private guards employed. Uh, he produces a semi-automatic weapon and tells us we're, we won't be able to access that public road. He's blocked that road. What he's in the process of doing is taking the land of people on the other side of that road or his employer is in the process of doing that because they can no longer access that land. And this is a process that, despite our effort to get it reversed, has not been reversed. At the presidential level, the president, President Aquino, has tried to impact this. But at the local level in the Philippines, USAID and MCC, despite all of their engagement there, and we have a $433 million compact with the Philippines that's going to be completed in, in May of 2016, in December, the board made the Philippines eligible to develop a second compact. So I, I think the MCC agrees that the lack of enforceable property and land tenure rights in the, in the Philippines constrains economic growth. I know what I have heard from the U.S. Uh, uh, Philippine-American investment community about their experiences there, their problems there. Will you condition the second compact upon progress in this area to make sure that on these public roads, the federal government of the Philippines keeps them open, keeps them public, and you remove those well-placed develop those you know well-connected developers who are out there blocking access so that people can get to their property. And and, and the other question I'd ask is what uh, of both of you is what else can can we be doing to press the government to take this seriously? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, in reference to the compact, well, first let me say that MCC's experience has absolutely been the case that one of the key impediments to economic growth is insecure land tenure and the need for land reform. So uh, we've worked in those areas in many countries. We're working now in Cape Verde. Uh, we're building a compact in Morocco that, that has land reform at the center of it. Um, we are, as you mentioned, looking at a second investment in the Philippines. We are in the very early stages of that. Uh, we will be guided, of course, by the economic analysis. Um, but I commit to you that if, if, if land is an issue in the Philippines, we will take a very careful but, look at looking but at But wait a minute. We've been working on this for three years now. We've had, taken two trips down there. Yes. We've had this happen in the middle of a typhoon. We've had this happen on an ongoing basis with respect to people's inability to access their property. Mm -hmm. uh, having already had this compact in place, my point is, uh, th these are discussions, as I say, I don't know how high this up is on the embassy's list of things to do, but this is the principal impediment uh, to investment there, is getting this process fixed so that people, and, and the other point I would make is it's a major issue in terms of people in the Philippines now who don't have the means Mm -hmm. of preventing well-connected people from routinely doing this. Mm -hmm. As I say, nobody, to my knowledge, has been uh, charged in this process. And frankly, to be on a public road and uh, to hear about this and go out there and have a, a gun waved in your face mm -hmm. uh, is, is just an affirmation or, or an indication mm -hmm. that what people are talking about uh, is a huge problem that is not being confronted, not being reversed. Okay. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. I'm out of time. I'll, I'll go to Mr. Engel, and thank you very much. Thank you.